Hey YouTube, it's GV Loan Guy. It's December 27th, 2011, and I'm going to bring you a little bit of, compile a little bit of information about the build up to uh, war. Declared this month in their online publication, Foreign Affairs, that it is now time to attack Iran. To those who are unaware of the degree which the Council on Foreign Relations is able to dictate foreign policy, the following clips should be informative. This is interesting. Thank you very much, um, Richard, and I am delighted to be here in these new headquarters. Um, I have been often to, uh, I guess, the mothership in New York City, uh, but it's good to have an outpost of the Council right here down the street from the State Department. Uh, we get a lot of advice from the council, so this will mean I won't have this far to go to uh, be told uh, what we should be doing. At oh, yeah. The Council on Foreign Relations tells these folks what they should be doing. And uh, how uh, we should uh, think about the future. And it tells them how to think about the future. It's good to be back at the Council on Foreign Relations. As uh, Pete mentioned, I've been a member for a long time and was actually a director for some period of time. I never mentioned that when I was campaigning for re-election back home in Wyoming. Of course not, because they would not have re-elected you if you did. We're already familiar with the CFR and their influence on all levels of the federal government. It should come as no surprise that U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff General Martin Dempsey indicated this week that the U.S. has every intention of following that advice. In an interview with U.S. media in Afghanistan, General Dempsey stated that he had been quietly leading behind-the-scenes preparations for an attack against Tehran. My biggest worry is that it may miscalculate our resolve. Any miscalculation could mean that we are drawn into conflict, and that would be a tragedy for the region and the world, he said. In the context of these statements, the recent withdrawal from Iraq looks very much like strategic repositioning to free up resources for this upcoming war. Many analysts fear that such an attack would draw in China and Russia, who have extensive diplomatic and economic relationships with Iran. U.S. officials are clearly undeterred by such a possibility. So how can the public prevent the U.S. government from drawing the entire world into mutually assured destruction? What you need to understand is the people who are running the show fully intend to take us into World War III. They are perfectly willing to sacrifice you, your children, and the entire planet for their political goals. Iran's Navy chief has announced plans to hold a 10-day drill in international waters beyond the strategic strait of Hormuz. Now, the drill will begin on Saturday over a 1,250-mile stretch of sea off the southern edge of the Arabian Peninsula near the entrance to the Red Sea. The exercise, bringing Iranian ships into close proximity with U.S. Navy vessels, is being seen as a later show of strength by Iran in the face of mounting international criticism over its controversial nuclear program. Iran's military drill dubbed uh, Vilayad E-90 has entered its third day. Iranian Navy commander Erdogan said of the country's military capabilities and defense powers in international waters, but he adds that the drill would not involve a closure of the Strait of Hormuz. Israel and the United States have not voiced their concerns on the drill so far. <coughs> Thank you. 
this would lead to Iranian retaliation in the Strait of Hormuz, the crucial shipping lane in the Persian Gulf. An Iranian attack there would force American action. Fifteen supertankers a day pass through that narrow strip of water between the United Arab Emirates and Iran. They carry nearly all Persian Gulf oil, and that's 40% of the world's seaborne oil. Pretty much any attempt by Iran to close a strait or interdict commercial maritime traffic almost necessitates an American military response. Though Iran has a broad spectrum of military options in the strait, there are significant complications both for Iran effectively employing these options and for the U.S. in containing and counteracting them. Fear regarding the security of maritime commerce in the Strait of Hormuz can quickly impact the global oil market, current economic climate around the world. That's a serious threat in and of itself. Another of Iran's options would be to use its fast attack missile boats. These are said to be equipped with Chinese-built CA-202 anti-ship missiles based on the U.S. Harpoon and French Exocet designs. Used in a surprise strike, they could score some early hits. Overall, Stratfor's military assessment shows the Iranians have enough firepower to cause serious damage. But once hostilities got underway, the Americans would use their superior technological power to neutralize both the Iranian Navy and Air Force. Yeah, that may be the case. But in the meantime, our economy is going to be completely crashed and in the toilet because the oil is going to come to a screeching halt, and that's pretty much going to shut everything down here in this country. So they can have an effect on us immediately over there. There you go. So we're getting ready, folks. Getting ready for war.